Hello, you're watching Sightline on MNB World. Today on Zoom, we're talking to Ms. Ingechen Batschagel, CEO and co-founder of GearHub, a non-profit social enterprise that fights depression issues in gear areas in Ulaanbaatar. Uh, how are you, Ingechen? Uh, thank you for joining us on Sightline. How are you, uh, Indigir? Thanks for having me on Sightline. It's my pleasure to be here. So uh, GearHub, which you co-founded, is a show social enterprise that supports Ulaanbaatar's gear areas. Uh, which is the sprawling settlements of Mongolian gears or small detached houses that are home to over 60% of Ulaanbaatar residents. Before we start talking about what GearHub does, could you share with us the pressing issues that threaten the safety of the gear areas residents? Sure, of course. So as you just mentioned, over 60% of uh, Ulaanbaatar's population live in gear areas. Um, but gear areas are actually the original form of urban settlement for Mongolians. So it's what makes our cities unique from other you know, cities in the world. Um, but you know, due to rapid urbanization and unplanned growth, um, we are experiencing a lot of problems uh, related to service provision and uh, the land area that it encompasses has you know, expanded massively. For gear area residents, I think, uh, as we all might agree, the main problem is uh, air pollution. Um, air pollution um, is you know, related to the lack of central heating infrastructure and other uh, alternative um, energy resources that are available in the market that is competitive with uh, coal-based heating. And as we all know, its, um, it's consequences have um, very um, difficult um, economic and health um, issues. And if we consider the fact that almost half of the population is living in one city, uh, I definitely think air pollution is uh, a big issue. Um, besides that, there are you know, many other issues uh, um, that I wanna talk about, but maybe I can shortly mention socioeconomic related issues such as employment, specifically um, training that's lacking that leads to quality and um, formal employment opportunities, um, the lack of uh, public infrastructure such as libraries, um, museums, playgrounds, um, and community spaces that contribute to uh, community development. Okay, thank you. So the pressing issues that exist in the gear areas are air pollution and socioeconomic uh, employment, unemployment. So if you have to name one factor that has contributed to these issues the most, what would you say? Is the government uh, responsible for them or are they due to some special characteristics of Mongolia like the climate? Or is it the fault of the people who are living in the gear areas? So it's a very complex, you know, situation that we're dealing with. So um, there are many factors that have led to what we're dealing with right now. So we, there is no single stakeholder that we can point a finger to and, you know, put a blame on and hold it accountable, unfortunately. Um, urbanization is happening all around the world. So we are not the only country that's dealing with um, uh, issues related to urbanization. Um, I think I read somewhere that um, almost 70% of the world population will be urbanized by 2050. So it's, uh, it's a global phenomenon that we're dealing with. Uh, as for Mongolia, um, there are many factors. Um, that are leading to rapid urbanization. Um, one of them is climate change and natural disasters related um, my, rural to urban migration. Um, we all know there have been severe zots that have led and forced people to move to the city. Um, and, but at the same time, I think there hasn't been any significant rural revitalization policies that have been implemented um, so that people actually want to stay back in the countryside. Um, so I'd say, you know, people are moving into the city in search of uh, better employment opportunities and educational opportunities. And it's a, it's a very natural thing that's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I understand that your main projects such as a gear innovation challenge, gear plugin, hubcap and others are meant to modernize and redesign the Mongol gear, the Mongolian gear. 
And as the word innovation is used a couple of times, can you tell us what kind of innovations you've been using to improve the Mongolian gear and what results you've seen so far? Uh, since our establishment in 2016, we've been working with uh, various international um, institutions to research and um, test solutions that at diff different levels uh, to explore how we can improve um, the gears in, an, in a sedentary and urban setting. So for instance, uh, we've worked with the University of Pennsylvania Center for Environmental Building Design to conduct a comprehensive study on the thermal performance of gears. And um, some might wonder why this is necessary because you know, the gear is a tested structure that nomads have been using you know, for the past um, two, 3,000 years. But you know, when gears are you know, uh, clustered in, in a mass amount of numbers in an urban setting, they pose um, different problems. And I think it's um, very important that we develop our solutions based on evidence. And that initiative developed um, and was picked up by UNICEF uh, Office of Innovation and the country offices. Uh, and we were able to work with partners such as um, Arcteryx, um, the North Face, uh, Kieran Timberlake, and um, Stanford University to test and develop some solutions. And uh, um, yeah, I think uh, those have been important ways to learn what we can improve for the gear. Uh, the results of all of these initiatives related to gear modernization, I think has, um, uh, has led a movement uh, of insulating gears because prior to our work, uh, gears were kind of um, left out of you know, the insulation and the air pollution conversation. And um, we've been able to push this. And uh, uh, as a result, the University of uh, uh, Science and Techno Technology in Mongolia has been able to develop a set of um, uh, products that can be uh, purchased uh, and in the market that is as competitive as you know, um, using coal-based heating methods. And uh, with, uh, yeah, with the University of Hong Kong's Rural Urban Framework, um, we've uh, developed a, pro a product prototype called the Gear Plugin. It's a concept based on what many families already own, which is the Gear. And uh, basically, the, the intent is to provide them with basic infrastructure. So our Gear Plugin has uh, um, an indoor toilet and shower system that's connected to a septic system and a dual heating um, system that runs both by coal and electricity. Um, and for all of our initiatives, we um, try to emphasize on the price point. Uh, pro our approach has been to develop the most affordable and uh, safest solutions uh, considering our target customers and target market. Okay, so uh, you're saying that you've tried to uh, make your innovation, innovative products as affordable as possible. So if someone wants to insulate their gear using uh, your gear innovation packages and may want to have the gear plugin installed in their gear, uh, can you tell us about how much would that cost? And I'm also wondering if some of the prices are discounted because you collaborate with a number of big organizations. So um, the plugin prototype cost about um, 12,000 US dollars to build. And um, when people hear about this, their reaction is, uh, wow, that's uh, really expensive and no one can afford it. And uh, we totally agree with this point, but um, what I think we need to consider is the fact that the, that it's a prototype and that usually first prototypes are very expensive and we've learned a lot um, over the years uh, on how we can um, decrease the costs. And, um, and when you actually compare it with an average house, 
uh, that's being built in the Garriers. Uh, it's quite comparable, um, except the Gear plugin um, provides uh, more um, infrastructure that's environmentally friendly and more convenient for the uh, for the family. And uh, as for the Gear uh, Innovation Challenge, the products that uh, came to fruition in the market, um, those were separately uh, that the final products were. Um, developed by the University of Science and Technology team in Mongolia. Um, and last time I heard it, it cost about a million dollars for a, a set of products. So insulation and heating products. And we think that's a, a pretty affordable rate. And I think they were actually providing like financial um, help and to you know, make it more affordable. Okay, in order to decrease the pollution coming from the gear areas, uh, I understand you're focused on innovative ways to insulate and modify the gear, so the level of heat loss is decreased. Uh, but are you conducting any research or planning a project which aims at modifying coal burning stoves that are used in the gear areas? Mm. Uh, so far, we haven't initiated um, or focused on, on the heating source. We've been focusing on you know, insulation because that's one thing that um, Mongolian gear dwellers are not doing. Um, you know, I've been around um, researching in gear areas and many people actually just leave their door open and it's, um, there, are, there are a lot of problems rel related to behavior. Um, that we should work on. And, uh, and I think focusing on insulation is important because um, we don't want a another efficient stove that produces, uh, you know, some form of pollution. So could you tell us what percentage of heat loss from gears has decreased after installing your gear innovation challenge products? Um, so uh, the study, so we will be releasing the study um, uh, pretty soon this spring, but uh, I don't specifically remember the number because I'm very bad at numbers, but it basically, if you insulate your gear well, uh, you can basically pay the same amount for electricity as you pay for, go uh, as you pay for coal. Um, so I think that's a pretty significant uh, finding from our studies. And um, even, though, even though we may still be paying the same amount, we, uh, we will be, you know, producing no pollution. So your organization is called Gear Hub. Uh, so does that mean you only work on the Mongolian gear, the tent-like dwelling made from uh, wooden frames and covered by uh, wool felt? Or do you also attempt to modify the many small self-built uh, self houses that exist in the gear areas? So. The, the reason why we chose the name Gear Hub is so that all gear area related research, we can be, become a, a hub for all gear area related research. So that means um, we can definitely look at housing insulation or improvements in housing. Uh, but the way we see it, there are enough players on the market that are focusing on housing provision and housing related uh, improvements. So, and, and not many are focusing on gears. And that's why we uh, decided to um, focus on gears uh, at, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. So modifying the Mongolian gear is not the only focus at GearHub. Uh, in order to solve the other major gear area issues, you carry out lots of other projects, uh, which are designed to educate people raising awareness and so on. Okay, can you please share us with some of the other projects that Gear Hub is carrying out? Our main uh, mission is to transform the gear areas into more um, vibrant and uh, healthy places. And we do this through two main pillars, um, social innovation and education. Uh, so all of our product development initiatives fall under our social innovation pillar. And under our education pillar, uh, we have developed our education program, Girute. And uh, the aim is to, for Girute, the aim is to nurture the, the next generation of um, creative problem solvers and, uh, and thinkers. The reason um, why we decided to 
focus more in education is that while we were working on product development, uh, we realized that we need a community of actors uh, who are looking at these issues and developing you know, different innovative projects and products and services. Um, and that our next generation, um, if, we, if we can you know, provide uh, training and skills for our next generation, we can have a better collective impact on the social issues that we're trying to solve at GearHub. So um, does it mean you're running your own GearHub courses or giving scholarship to those who are planning to major in this sector, uh, who in the future will come up with more innovative uh, solutions to these issues? We have uh, short and uh, a little longer, I guess, not a long program, but short and long programs that we implement under our Giruta program. Um, they learn um, various skills that we consider as 21st century skills. So that's collaboration, um, critical thinking, communication, and creativity. So we run various workshops under those themes. And another thing is um, um, we focus a lot on, on, on project-based learning. Um, we think it's important for kids to develop their own projects, research about their own projects, and and get a chance to implement it as young as possible, so that they are more activated and and uh, become more creative at a young age. Okay, so what's the admission process of your uh, educational programs like? If there is a high schooler who's interested in enrolling, how do you recruit the new participants? So for those students who are interested in our Giruda program, um, you should follow our Facebook page, our Instagram account, and um, uh, our website as well. Uh, Giruta recently launched uh, its own website. So we'll also be accepting applications to our uh, Giruta website, which is girute.org. Um, the program is all free. Uh, it's funded by a Korean um, nonprofit called Nexon Foundation. Um, and we provide a variety of uh, programs that are different in length and you know, in content. Um, and um, our recruitment is based on open applications through a selective process. Are there any new projects that you've started or planning to launch in the near future uh, that you would like to highlight now? So uh, we've uh, built a community space in Sangenhagen District's 43rd Hara called Get the Gear Innovation Hub. Uh, we partnered with our partners at the Rural Urban Framework um, at the University of Hong Kong. And um, the concept of the building is pretty interesting and has been covered by uh, quite a few international media sites um, for its design. If you go to our Facebook page, I think you can look at the photos. Oh yes, I've seen the photos. Uh, it looks like a greenhouse. Um, why did you decide to build it like that? Um, so that is intentional. <laughs> um, the, the building is based on the concept of a greenhouse. It's a greenhouse built on top of uh, a house. And the concept is to use as much as passive solar heating to heat the building during daytime when people are using it. Uh, so it's meant to be more energy uh, efficient. Um, our work for, the, for our community space has been kind of delayed due to COVID, uh, but we hope to uh, kickstart its operations um, this year once you know, things are uh, better. Um, another project that I'd like to highlight is a project that we're working in collaboration with uh, uh, University College London and University of uh, Melbourne um, and Public Lab Mongolia, a Mongolian nonprofit uh, called ONA. And uh, what this research pro project is looking at is uh, equitable access um, to mobility in the Gary areas. So our results of the research will come out soon and we'll be doing a campaign to um, campaign, a social media campaign to uh, introduce that. Okay, thank you very much, Inchjin, for talking to us about this crucial issue that you have been successfully working on. Uh, thank you, uh, Sideline, for having me on your um, show. It's been a real um, pleasure for me to be here. You've watched Sideline.
This time we spoke to Ms. Inkjum Batjarov, CEO and co-founder of Gear Hub, which aims to fighting depression issues in gear areas in Ulaanbaatar. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.